<laughs> Hello, I'm Anna from Certified American Grown. Uh, we have a series called Farmer Fridays where we meet with different American flower or foliage farmers and get to know them a little bit better. Uh, this week we're meeting with Partha Saha of Owlet Farms in Pines Grove, New Jersey. Hi Partha, how are you? Hi Anna, doing good, how are you? Good, I'm well. Um, how's, the, how's the weather? Looks pretty beautiful out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, it rained today in the morning. Uh, perfect timing. Uh, yeah. It's about harvest in a week, so I, I don't have to switch on the irrigation today. We have enough rain. <laughs> That's always nice. It's always nice yeah. when, the, when the earth provides. <laughs> well, yes, absolutely. I have a few questions for you. Um, so I wanted to know, how did you start farming? Uh, it was a little bit before COVID, and uh, uh, I always liked uh, peonies, and I used to uh, <laughs> go to the local uh, grocery stores when it was peony season, and uh, I used to be like really disappointed with uh, the peony uh, stocks they would have. They would have very like ten to fifteen bunches, and they would get sold in two minutes, and you would never get to see any more stems. Mm -hmm. And uh, that got me intrigued because uh, this is such a beautiful flower, peonies, and uh, everybody likes, uh, starting from grandmas to teenagers. Uh, it has amazing fragrance. So there's nothing not to like about peony. And uh, I was like, what's going on? Uh, so I started researching. Uh, there is a farm very close to mine. I tried going there. I, I went there once and saw. I was growing, I did a lot of research on how to take care. And I'm, I'm not a farmer myself, but uh, in my family growing up, I've seen my elders uh, be engaged in uh, farming in a very like indirect way. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they, they own the land and they used to rent it to other farmers. So I was, uh, as a kid only, I used to get excited when I used to go to like nurseries and uh, see flowers. So I was like, okay, let me, <laughs> Let me uh, go for it. Uh, I was always looking for an opportunity and I had uh, saved quite a bit of money and I was also always looking for a good uh, business opportunity. Yeah. I was a little bit uh, nervous because uh, uh, I am uh, I have a <clears throat> I have a job where I have to work like uh, in, as I'm in consulting. So I work in like offices with the four walls and the conference room. So yeah. This was a very different play where there are no conference rooms uh, and it's out in the open. You're so, in your conference room right now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's the nature. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I was a little bit nervous. Uh, will I be able to do it or not? And will the farm be end up being my garden, my personal garden? Uh, if, if you're not able to sell flowers. Yeah, uh, your expensive personal garden, yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yes. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, so far it has been awesome. Uh, the response from uh, the market, uh, the way the plants are growing. Um, I would not say I had, I always had a very green thumb, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, I, I do appreciate and I do love uh, so many farmers posting so many informative videos all the time. And I kind of like started tracking those and I started uh, following them on, on social media, uh, got in touch with a few farmers. Uh, they were very, very helpful because they are doing it for hundreds of years. So they were very helpful uh, to kind of like tell me what's good, not so good. Uh, and overall, like uh, economic environment also uh, <clears throat> was something that um, I thought that we could take advantage of. Um, yeah, I just saw that if people like, uh, if there is always a market for niche flowers, and if I have good quality flowers, then I couldn't see a reason why I couldn't uh, uh, prosper. So mm -hmm. that's the reason why I'm like, okay, uh, let's go a little bit crazy uh, <laughs> and uh, let's order a, a couple of hundreds of thousands of fruits and yeah. let's see how it goes. Yeah. Well, and, yes, uh, it all right, and those are the peonies behind you, right? Yes. So we yeah. have uh, basically in our farm, basically two sections. Um, so this is a 55 acre uh, farm. And uh, I also have a 160 acre property. 
Mm, we mostly grow uh, corn and soy mm-hmm. as the traditional. So I had the missionary in, and uh, I had the mm, I had the know how of soil uh, a little bit. So I was like, okay, let me dive into flowers. Let's see. It's a totally different ball game, but uh, let me see. So uh, out of the fifty-five acres, uh, this is the ten acres um, uh, that we have. Uh, our flowers growing they are four year olds uh this is the second year of harvest and uh uh we also have another um uh section uh that's also another i would say eight acres uh mm-hmm. that we have new plants growing so they are on the second year so we will not harvest from them this year but they're up and strong growing uh we just debutted uh, all the new Hmm. <clears throat> new new plants so whenever that's, you don't harvest you just that's always hard <laughs> yes yes that's always, always hard, hard. <laughs> yes yes that is always hard and uh, uh here in the in the in the what we call as the old patch like uh, basically the four-year old plants uh we also had to we also have to debut so i'm just uh gradually increasing the production uh for them uh this year we are only harvesting uh, two or three stems from them. Uh, just want to make sure the plants are nice and healthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, just want them to flourish as much as possible, be strong, be healthy. And these plants uh, then can go on for years and years. And, yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And how long will they bloom there in those fields in New Jersey? Um, so um, what we're looking at is uh, we are very close to uh, the bul- the bulbs are uh, still uh, like rock solid. They say that it needs to be a marshmallow state mm-hmm. when we have to harvest. Uh, we see, uh, of course, we missed the Mother's Day mark. Uh, that is something that uh, Mother Nature Mother Nature doesn't provide <laughs> to us uh, here in New Jersey. So uh, for my family, I have to uh, buy peonies from outside, <laughs> um, uh, mostly from the Carolinas. Um, uh, and then uh, for us, uh, mostly uh, May, May third week is our time. Okay. Uh, we are we are very close to what we had. Uh, we're following the time very closely to what we had last uh, year. Uh, so we had our first uh, uh, harvest around May beginning of third week, mm-hmm. and we 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 harvested for about uh, three or four days, and we were done. Um, so uh, we had very less, as, as, as more and more years go by, we have more and more buds we can harvest. Mm-hmm. Um, and and uh, when the new patch uh, comes live, it will be total madness. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we're, we're trying to plan for as much as possible uh, uh, so that we, we don't have to waste flowers and mm-hmm. debug anything and uh, uh, let it waste. Yeah, but... Um, so far, uh, the <clears throat> plants look uh, pretty awesome. Um, we do take care of them all the time. Uh, we are not organic. Um, we have to um, spray um, uh, the pre-emergence, uh, but that is uh, the only thing that uh, is mm-hmm. not uh, organic for us at this moment. Uh, but we uh, apply a lot of... Uh, uh, so we have uh, beds, uh, raised beds uh, that we have, and uh, mm-hmm. we have uh, plastic uh, in the middle. Yep. Um, plastic is also not very environment friendly, but uh, uh, these last for 25, 30 years. So mm-hmm. uh, this is something that I also learned from other farmers who told me that go for it unless yeah. you want to spend your whole day and night just weeding. Weeding. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, right. So. Oh, yeah, and yeah. then when once the peonies are are done blooming, do you have to dig up the tubers? No, so they're they not they like stay? dahlias. Okay. No, no, they're yeah, they're not like, like dahlias. So peonies are known to grow in Alaska, in Russia, mm-hmm. in all the cold climates. They love the they love the cold. They love mm-hmm. the sub zero temperature, and uh, um, uh, so <clears throat> we don't uh, we don't dig them dig the roots out we do cut the stem so around uh, uh, late fall the plants will start to like die down mm-hmm. die down in the sense that the stems they go to go into uh, like a hibernation so mm-hmm. at that point of time we cut down all the stems 
and we make sure we throw them outside of the farm and uh, we dispose of them properly uh, just for, for hygiene purposes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then we let the we let the plant rest over the winter uh, and you always, the whole winter, you anticipate, okay, what will happen the coming year? Yeah. Uh, yeah, will my plants come back or not? And uh, how will they come back? And uh, <laughs> you, you keep on dreaming about for the, the next, uh, like, yes. uh, I, October to like March, you keep on dreaming. Yes. And then uh, March, April, they they, start they, they pop out. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they come out and they, you're like excited. It's always a sad part when all this green just goes away. Yes. It looks pretty, pretty. Uh, well, and that's quite an in, investment, right? To have a peony field because you can't yes. grow anything else there and you get the uh, peonies cannot... for a short time. And yes, and that's, that's right. So. Uh, it's kind of like a little bit of a chicken and egg scenario uh, yeah. where uh, buyers, uh, they want to see the flowers before they buy. And uh, you, you want the buyers to buy them before the flowers. Before, yes. So, <laughs> so it's a little bit of a chicken and egg scenario. Yeah. Um, but, well, uh, well, speaking of that, how are people able to buy your peonies this year? Yeah, so uh, we mostly sell wholesale. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we are in talks with some uh, retail grocery chains, uh, but it's mostly wholesale. Uh, wholesale to florists who are um, either local or mostly Northeast USA. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a portal uh, website also that we okay. can uh, that anyone can go in and order some flowers. Uh, but uh, uh, for us. Uh, given the volume that we have, uh, just to optimize uh, the resources that we have, uh, we are uh, <clears throat> mostly concentrated on wholesale. Okay, uh, and then in is, the Northeast, yeah. right? So which, which wholesalers are you working uh, with? No, uh, no, our flowers go to everywhere. Our flowers okay. go to oh, all uh, of Miami. Oh, okay. Yeah, our flowers, yeah, our flowers go to South uh, Miami. Okay. Our flowers go to DC. Our flowers go to Boston. Okay. Uh, our flowers go to just uh, 30 minutes from here. We have uh, yeah. uh, one of the biggest. Uh, yeah, DV uh, Flora. Uh, yeah. Exactly right. <laughs> so we have them on, on uh, certificate, uh, certified American grown. Uh, yep. they, were, they were just here a couple of weeks before. Yeah, checking uh, out the farm. <laughs> exactly right. So I just told them that if you have any order, just call us. We just yeah. Are <laughs> well, interested in well, sp speaking of certified American, uh, why is it important for your farm to be part of the organization? Yes. So uh, uh, we all love our country. And uh, as I did, uh, like before starting the farm, I did a lot of research and I found that uh, uh, there were not a lot of many farms around. Uh, uh, that we're catering through the market and uh, uh, anytime our country like uh, we're very dependent on mm -hmm. everything that comes in uh, like uh, nowadays <clears throat> logistics is cheaper and of course labor is very cheap on, mm -hmm. on the other side of the border um, or on the other side of the ocean mm -hmm. so I was like okay um, uh, two things one is that uh, no one can beat uh, the fact that you can harvest the flower today and it ends up with, uh, with the consumer within less than three, four hours. Yeah. And the, the flowers stay fresh for a uh, couple of days, at least six or seven days uh, because they're so fresh. They, they don't go on coolers. Uh, <clears throat> that is not our cost. We don't have a cooler yet on the farm. We don't need to. Because we, as soon as we harvest, uh, it uh, gets it back immediately mm -hmm. and immediately into reefers and uh, immediately going out. And uh, 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 it's within uh, three or four hours, it can, uh, it, it's that short time that uh, yeah. it can end up uh, at the consumer's hand. So it's a very good quality. Uh, we have uh, last year <clears throat> when we did our first run, we didn't get any quality issues at all. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this is something. Uh, that I truly believe is something that uh, uh, we can achieve. I don't. I don't see why we can't achieve that. Um, and uh, for all our farmers, also not only just uh, not only just um, reaching out to the consumer is important, uh, but also uh, unity among the farmers. 
is also important where we collaborate. Uh, every time I post something on, on social media, I, uh, I, I get messages uh, from farmers saying, hey, uh, is this something that you're doing? Like a, they, they give us me advice and I, I am so fortunate enough to get that advice and I take that advice and uh, post learning. And if somebody, uh, <clears throat> there was recently a buyer who, who came and uh, for them, uh, uh, for someone to be down south was very, very important. So uh, through the network, we were able to uh, connect to farmers down south. Um, mm -hmm. They were looking for flowers in a different, uh, of course, before Mother's Day. Doesn't hurt me to uh, refer as they would also refer to. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, if somebody's looking for it later. So mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, yeah. so Community. That, that there is no reason why we have to. Exactly. And uh, there's no reason why when you have the flowers growing like within a couple of hours uh, from where the buyers are, we need to wait for uh, a plane load or a container to come yeah. from a different country or anything like that. Not Nothing against a different country or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but this, well, you know, supporting, yeah. supporting local, you know, supports the surrounding communities and the surrounding farms and families. and um, Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, even, even I didn't realize how much i always uh, yes i always uh, saw other businessmen think that okay local farmers like, okay fine this is some other uh, slogan or something like that but i just understood myself the importance of it because everything in my farm here uh, from uh, the farmers there are so many farmers who help me uh, do the tilling and uh, mm -hmm. advise me on uh, what the kind of soil is and everything. And uh, even the irrigation, like I used a local plumbing company, electrician, I use the local yep. electrician uh, company. Uh, so it's just money stays within the local company and uh, uh, it's, a, it's a nice thing to have. Yes. Well, I've got one final question I'm going to end with, and it's uh, sure. one of my, I love this question. So what's your favorite part about being a flower farmer? Ah, that's a hard question. Uh, mm -hmm. Favorite part is uh, every year see the roots uh, come back to life. Yeah. Uh, my heart gets broken two times in a year. Once <laughs> is when we harvest the flowers uh, and there are no flowers anymore on the farm. Uh, that is around the end of May uh, when we have our last uh, blooms and then uh, last harvest and then uh, in fall when you have to cut down yeah. all the plants so it's it's kind of like crazy like uh, you care for them but you cut them yeah. so that they're good the next year <laughs> yeah so it's a kind of like a like a dilemma there but yeah. uh, we have to do what's best uh for for uh the farm for the plants and so we do that there you go all right well thank you so much partha and you have a, a lovely day thanks for talking with us yeah <laughs> thank you for the opportunity take care